All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Inkscape, Inkstitch, and set it up to be ready to run with the tutorials. Mostly the, the options on the right hand side elude some people. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. This is a brand new install of Windows 10. And I even told it to fetch the new Edge, which is based on Google Chromium. First thing you're going to do is you're going to point your browser to inkscape.org. This is going to run just a, just a hair slow. It is in a virtual box, but it'll get the job done. Let's uh, download current version. Windows. Sorry, Mac folks. I don't have a Mac. I am going to see if I can do a VirtualBox Mac. I don't know. I have never ever done it, so don't know. Pick your architecture if you don't know. You're probably on 64-bit. You're probably safe selecting 64-bit. I'm just going to select the .exe format. Either one of the first two will be fine, I'm sure. And it's just about done. Open file. Double click it. Either one. There it goes. Like I said. Alright. Welcome to Inkscape Setup. Next. I agree. Uh, let's go ahead and create a desktop icon. Hit next, 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 next install. Okay. We're going to let that run. I'm not going to subject you to the whole thing, so I will be back just shortly. Okay. Install is done. You have the option to run Inkscape. I'm going to uncheck that. It doesn't matter if you do, but I'm going to uncheck it because I want to go get Inkstitch. Now that's basically the same, inkstitch.org. I will put the links for both of these into the show notes. Let's see, we're going to go to installation and we are on Windows. Almost clicked Linux out of habit. Oh, that's just the YouTube. Hold on. I don't need that. It's the video guide. Uh, download. That's what we want. Okay. Uh, if you just... Let me start over here. Okay. If I scroll down, okay, if you scroll down, just go to inkstitch.org, scroll down just a hair, right there is download inkstitch. That takes you to the GitHub, not a problem, I'm going to show you how to, in, how to download it from here. You're going to look for whatever language you need. Uh, this is going to be Linux Windows right here. Inkstitch Windows English US Zip. If you click that, it will start downloading. The other one I saw if you click the installation user manual and then click download, it's going to take you down here to this option. So just it's the same thing when you click English Windows it's the same file they're getting it from the same place you can see it's the same one two nine one so it doesn't matter which one you do I showed you how to do both of them doesn't matter they're the same file so close that out open up your file browser downloads I have two of them because I showed you downloading two different options. I'm going to delete that one. 
don't do anything with this one just yet except for right click and either cut or copy I'm gonna copy because I want to always have my original available in case I mess something up so I copied now we're going to start Inkscape and select edit preferences down here on system down here toward the bottom go to system user extensions this shows you where the user extensions goes and you should be able to click this open and be able to open it right up now I'm going to right click and paste where I copied that ink stitch plugin now I'm going to right click I'm going to extract all and I want it to extract app data roaming inkscape ink stitch ink extension okay right here where it's got ink stitch version 129 windows english blah 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 after extensions uh, scrape across that highlight it all and delete it because we want it to extract straight into extensions so now you should have your username app data roaming inkscape extensions the backwards slash and that's it hit extract it's a good moment for some coffee okay all right this that should have worked pretty sure that should have worked we're going to close all this out we're going to close out inkscape and then close this out too well restart Ink, inkscape now we're going to go to extensions ink stitch and install add-ons install Okay, now it says I might I need to restart. I don't think I do, but it might. Okay. Yep, restart Inkscape again. Now we'll go to extensions, ink stitch, and oh wait, you know what? This little color palette right here. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Right here along this bottom color palette. Once you've installed it and you've done the add-ons, now you can select Ink Stitch Embroidery Machine. We have a brother embroiderer, so that's going to change. Let me make it big. That's going to change this color palette to my Embroidery Machine color palette. That's really cool. So, the next thing is, there should be options on the side over here and those are super easy layer layers there's one of them object objects now I have layers and objects options let me squeeze this over a little bit that makes it a little easier and uh, what's next text and font that's another one text and font there's objects text and font so when you're following tutorials most of the time this stuff is over here and it's annoying if you don't know how to get it up there I understand completely uh, that might be it but if you're missing something on the side over here it's probably just one of these up here and I know the let's see what's what's the ones I use the most I use objects for layers and I use text a lot oh I know something else that I use a lot of is a uh, fill and stroke where is fill and stroke right there under objects fill and stroke so that'll be another one that you that you need to use and that's right here fill and stroke it's right underneath where did I say 
where did I say it was? Under under objects, fill and stroke, and object properties and all that groups and groups. So that's how you get your your necessary objects on the side, and then you can scroll between them. Last but not least, I am going to do you a favor. We're just just do this extensions ink stitch troubleshoot objects it should be fine all shapes are valid we're going to save this we're going to save this as my machines a, saves as a dot pes so that's what we're going to save it as i want to save it doesn't matter i guess i'll save it in documents yeah so drawing save as type svg i want to save as dot ps so it should be in here there's ink stitch ps there we go that's it i'm gonna hit save it takes it just a second to do that i'm gonna close this out the reason i did this nonsense close without saving is to show you one last little thing documents now I have drawing PS and if I try to open that it's gonna say Windows doesn't know what to do with this file so I'm going to always use make sure this is checked always use this to open a .pes file and you can do this with all, all of the embroidery files. But you're going to scroll that down. You're going to look for another app. And then you're going to type in Inkscape. And right here is Inkscape. I'm going to open that. And then I'm going to open the bin. B-I-N. And right there is your Inkscape executable. So I'm going to double click that Inkscape. Now my drawing.pes file, now it will always open under Inkscape. There you go. This is a little bonus round. I'm going to show you another way to get those files where you need them to be. When I was doing the, the editing, it didn't seem quite as straightforward as I had liked it to be. So. I'm going to show you just one more option. Let me fire up Inkscape here. I'm going to remove, I'm actually going to remove the plugin. So I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, and then System. This user extensions is where you want it to be. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to Control A, that selects everything, and then I'm going to hit Delete. Now my plugin is gone. Oh my goodness. But that's okay because remember I said copy and not cut. So my copy is right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually extract all right here in the downloads. It's going to extract it to downloads and then this ink stitch windows blah blah blah. Just leave it as is and then extract it to wherever it wants to be. Uh, while that's extracting. Let me close this out so it's a, more like a brand new setup. So all I did, instead of what I did before, just I downloaded Ink Stitch to Downloads, and then I right-clicked and selected Extract All. So it's going to extract it. In this folder right here when it's done we need to wait till it's done though so once it's done it's gonna obviously it's gonna automatically open up the folder if it doesn't right here in this folder this is zipper is your zip file this folder is where it opened up to so open that up if it didn't already on its own and what you're gonna do is just select every file in here there's two good ways you can do that. And I can 
let me gain familiarity with Windows here. Okay, I'm not used to Windows, but if you if you hit Home, one of your options way over here on the right is Select All, or you can Control A and uh, will also select All, which you see that pop up. Select A also or Control A also selects All. So select all and then we're going to copy which is this button right here copy or you can control C is copy so just hit copy now we're going to open Inkscape go into edit preferences now go to system and then that user extensions open that up now you're gonna paste right here's your paste and it also tells you that control V is paste so I'm gonna control V and then that's going to paste everything that we copied into this Inkscape extensions folder basically it's it's the same way we did it the first time but it might be a little bit more user-friendly it's you're not editing a path so given both of those you should be able to figure it out and close everything out restart Inkscape my plugin should be there extensions ink stitch everything's here probably don't have to do that again the add-ons since I did it the first go around but it won't hurt it So now we're back to having everything installed. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps you out.